an account of the system of the world described in mr newton's mathematical principles of philosophy by sir isaac newton this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox.org an account of the system of the world described in mr newton's mathematical principles of philosophy one scripture abused to prove the immovableness of the globe of the earth in determining the true system of the world the main question is whether the earth do rest or be moved for deciding this some bring texts of scripture but in my opinion misinterpreted the scriptures speaking not in the language of astronomers as they think but in that of the common people to whom they were written so where tis said that god hath made the round world so fast that it cannot be moved the prophet intended not to teach mathematicians the spherical figure and immovableness of the whole earth and sea in the heavens but to tell the vulgar in their own dialect that god had made the great continent of asia europe and africa so fast upon its foundations in the great ocean that it cannot be moved therein after the manner of a floating island for this continent was the whole habitable world anciently known and by the ancient eastern nations was accounted round or circular as was also the sea encompassing it and this earth and sea they accounted flat as if the sun moon and stars ascended out of the ocean at their rising and went down into it again at their setting this continent is the world or earth usually mentioned in scripture and there described to be broad and to have end or borders that is circular ones whose centres some placed in egypt others at delphus others at jerusalem and this world the prophets consider as established in the ocean upon sure and immovable foundations at the first creation the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water that is in the midst of the ocean like an island by the word of god second book of peter chapter three verse five thou lord in the beginning hast laid the foundations of the earth and the heavens are the work of thine hands psalm one hundred two verse twenty five proverbs eight verse twenty nine where wast thou when i laid the foundations of the earth declare if thou hast understanding who hath laid the measures thereof or who hath stretched the line over it whereupon are the foundations thereof fixed or who hath laid the cornerstone thereof when the stars of the morning praised me together etc job chapter thirty eight verse four the earth is the lord's and all that therein is the compass of the world and they that dwell therein for he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods psalm twenty four verse one and two and psalm one hundred thirty six verse six thou hast laid the foundation of the round world psalm eighty nine verse twelve when he set a circle upon the face of the deep that is formed it circular about the earth when he gave to the sea his decree that the waters should not pass his commandment when he appointed the foundations of the earth then was i by him proverbs chapter eight verse twenty seven twenty nine he laid the foundations of the earth that it never should move at any time thou encompassed it with the deep like as with a garment psalm one hundred four verse five so then the round world spoken of in scriptures is such a world as hath foundations and is founded in the waters and by consequence tis not the whole globe of the earth and sea but only the habitable dry land for the whole globe hath no foundations but this habitable world is founded in the seas and since this world by reason of the firmness of its foundations is said in scripture to be immovable this immovableness cannot be of the whole globe together but only of its parts one amongst another and signifies nothing more than that those parts are firmly compacted together so that the dry land or continent of europe asia and africa cannot be moved upon the main body of the globe on which it is founded for this immovableness of the earth is opposite to that its motion spoken of in job 
He removeth the mountains, and they feel not when he overthroweth them in his wrath. He removeth the earth out of her place, that the pillars thereof do shake. Job chapter 9 verse 6 2. Mathematics abused to prove the globe of the earth immovable. There is another sort of arguments against the motion of the whole earth taken from our senses, as if the earth could not be moved without our being many ways sensible of its motion. But this way of arguing proceeds from want of skill and judgment in mathematical things, and therefore is insisted upon only by the common people and such mathematicians as understand not so much as the principles of mechanics. Were the earth moved unevenly by jogs, such motion would be easily perceived, but an even motion such as the earth's is supposed ought to be imperceptible. For any system of bodies, the motions of the bodies one amongst another are the same whether the system rest or be moved on uniformly, as is mathematically demonstrable. So the motions of all things in a ship are found the same whether the ship rest or be under sail. In both cases, things fall perpendicularly down by the mast, and projectiles fly alike towards all quarters. Nor can a blinded mariner tell whether the ship move fast or slow or not at all. And there is the same reason of the system of the earth, sea, and air, with the things therein. We cannot tell by our senses whether they all rest or move on evenly together. 3. Accurate skill in geometry and mechanics requisite to decide the question. Such arguments as these being insufficient to determine the question, tis fit we should lay aside these and the like vulgar prejudice, and have recourse to some strict and proper way of reasoning. Now the question being about motion is a mathematical one, and therefore requires skill in mathematics to decide it and seeing it is difficulter to argue demonstratively about magnitude and motion together than about magnitude alone, there is greater still required here than in pure geometry, so that none but able mathematicians may pretend to be competent judges of this matter. The great difficulty of this part of mathematics seems to be the reason that the ancients made but little progress in it. In this last age, since the revival and advancement of these studies, some able mathematicians as Galileo and Hugenius have carried it on further than the ancients did. Mr. Newton, to advance it far enough for his purpose, has spent the two first of his three books in demonstrating new propositions about the force and motion before he begins to consider the system of the world. Then in his third book he teaches that system from the propositions demonstrated in the two first. The design of this paper is to give you an account of this system and refer you to the demonstrations thereof, to the book itself, or to the judgment of such mathematicians as have perused it. End of An Account of the System of the World Described in Mr. Newton's Mathematical Principles of Philosophy By Sir Isaac Newton Read by Abai in February 2016